Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video. And on this video folks, I am going to show you all the 5 easiest methods you will ever see that will allow you to take out the sawmill hoard easily. Now if you're one of the many people who simply doesn't enjoy taking on the large hoards in Days Gone, or you're just looking for a surefire way of getting past this particular hoard, then look no further folks. This is probably the last video on the sawmill hoard you will ever need to watch because these five methods are all that good and that easy to achieve. So without any further ado folks, let's get to the action. Right and folks, on to the first method and I call it the wood trap. Basically folks, the beauty of this method is it takes very little time in order to set up. I basically I'm trying to stay low when I get to this point here because the entire hoard is currently inside the sawmill building. From here, I'm just looking to hit them fast. Quite literally, just get a few shots off there. The whole idea is to attract them and from here, I'm heading up to this wood trap area. And you really want to be on the top left hand side where I am positioned now. And once you are in this position folks, you are virtually untouchable. I've seen one or two occasions where a creeper has managed to get up, but it very rarely happens. From here, you can basically do whatever you like. You can either conserve all your resources and take them out with gunplay, or you can use some napalm molotovs like I'm using here in order to get the numbers done quickly. All I would suggest you do is when you're in this uh, position, is if you do see any of the freakers getting up onto the higher levels, which I can see them at the moment doing, take them out with gunplay. Just don't give them the chance to actually get to your position. Now the next piece of information I'm going to give folks is pretty much common sense because I'm sure most people will not attempt to do this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Grenades and pipe bombs. Don't use them. <laughs> This is not a particularly high position and even if you crouch down and start throwing them out you are so close to the blast radius that you will be uh, launched off uh, this position. So <laughs> just don't do it folks. There is other areas where you can get away with grenades and pipe bombs but this is not one of them. Now also worth knowing folks that I didn't actually come up with this particular method. This is one that has been known about for a very long time, at least two years. But it is still one of the easiest and one of the most effective ways to take out this horde. Right, at this point folks, I know I've just about got the entire horde because they're not making anywhere near as much noise now. And if you have the use of survival vision, folks, I strongly suggest you use it. It's not only handy for actually showing where the last of the freakers are, but it also gives you a very good idea of their exact numbers. Because for this particular method, what I like to do is, when I get them down to less than 10 freakers, I like to jump off this position and take out the last of them, and basically with one of my weapons. It just makes sense, because why waste uh, good resources when there is so few of them? You could take them out with gunplay from here, but it's, it's actually a lot easier just to move out, let them run towards you, and it's a nice easy job. And there we go folks, that is the first method, done and dusted. A very quick way to do it, because it's taken well under 4 minutes from start to finish. Okay, on to method number 2. Right then folks, method number two. And this folks is possibly the easiest of the lot. It involves that rock at the top of that hill. And anybody who has seen any of my recent videos will know all about this method because I showed a video just highlighting this one very effective method. But it was always going to make one of the five methods that I was going to show in this video. I basically start getting the horde's attention once I see a few of them start to come out, I know I've got them. From here, I just need to make my way to the top of this hill. And you have a bit of time here. Just got to slow down the bike, reverse, 
just position myself nicely and then up we go once I'm up here folks this is untouchable they simply can't get near you even with their World War Z style tactics it's just not going to happen for them you have such a height advantage it's beyond belief from here this is what I always like to do to start with because you are positioned so well at this point that you can take off a great number of them as they're making their way up the hill here. Once I see their numbers start to dwindle, that's when I'm going to concentrate on all the freakers below me. Now, I am going to take the time to use one or two weapons here. As long as you move up a touch and crouch down, you can throw grenades or pipe bombs without the risk of being blown off this particular area. And that was quite a nice shot there of uh, one of the freakers just uh, passing by me there. <laughs> right, okay, at this point I'm actually going to stop with uh, the throw balls and basically go to the next stage in getting this done. And this part is very important if you're wanting to take out the entire horde without leaving this rock area. Basically, you get to this area where I'm at here and you very slowly start to make your way down by walking very slowly indeed. Uh, you will know when you're at the right spot because the rest of the freakers will start actually running towards your position. So I don't have them yet, so I'm just moving down a little bit at a time. The beauty is you can take your time in doing this as well. There is no rush because there is no danger. Uh, well, there is danger but it's all below you. <laughs> And as you can see folks, at this point I do have the horde's attention, now they can actually see my position. So, uh, on this particular run I do have the luxury of survival vision, which is very handy because as you can see now, the rest of the sawmill horde is making its way over to my position, because they do actually know where I am now. And this is fantastic, it just makes such an easy job. So the rest of the run at this point, folks, is basically just going to consist of gunplay and one or two Nathan Molotovs. Because the rest of the horde is making its way over to my position now, and this really is as easy as it gets, folks. Uh, plus the fact that you are in a position where you are simply untouchable makes this uh, method probably the safest and the easiest that you will get of the five but it's just a case now of tidying up what is left of this hole and it won't take long from here folks Right, at this point I can't see too many more of the Freakers actually running up to the position now. They're coming up very slowly at this point, so I'm pretty sure I have got most of the Horde now. So I'm just going to activate Survival Vision again, and yeah, I can see down below there's basically four of them left. So if I take these ones out, this should get the job done. And this one's just being a fucking pain. <laughs> yeah, there's always one. And yep, indeed. And there we have it, folks. That is the second method, the front rock. Okay, let's get on to method number three. Right, folks, on to method number three. And this is the ledge. Now, this is another method that I did not discover or come up with. In fact, this one is, of the five methods that I'm showing, this one is by far the most well-known. Because countless gamers on YouTube have shown this method. And for a very good reason, because it is super safe. And it is also very easy to do. Um, I'm just choosing to set off the wood trap there for no reason whatsoever, to be quite honest. But uh, I'm heading over basically to the other side of this building purely to get the Horde's attention. 
Uh, this is the only part that differs from how I would normally show um, taking on this horn. Normally I would actually go over to the entrance of the sawmill, um, start by um, setting off some gunplay and just getting the horde coming out in big numbers and then just slowly making my way around to the area that I need to get to. But uh, this way is a little bit more advantageous as basically you don't have the stress of having the horde actually follow you. I'm just basically setting them off. I can see that they're coming in large numbers. So from here, all I have to do is make my way over to the area. And it's basically around here, folks. Just very slowly walk until you get onto that section and then move over to this corner here. And this is where it all takes place. So the horde isn't here yet. They do take their time, but they do come over. So I'm just using a little bit of gunplay just to get their attention. Now, I do have survival vision, so I'm just going to use that as well. Just to see where they are, and here we go. At this point, folks, they now know exactly where I am. And they will start coming in larger numbers because the entire horde is just basically catching up with the front runners. And from here, I'm just going to take the time to take out this entire horde with gunplay and napalm molotovs only. You can use other items, but if you're going to use grenades and pipe bombs, I strongly suggest that you get Deacon into a crouched position and throw the grenades well out. Or the pipe bombs for that matter. Make sure they're thrown out at least as far as the wooden areas that are below Deacon here. That way, you shouldn't have any risk of being blown from the ledge that uh, basically Deacon is currently on. So I'm just going to let this uh, play out folks and I'll resume commentary when the hold is just about done. Okay folks, at this point I can see there is not that many freakers left, so this Napalm Molotov that I'm throwing now should do the job in taking out the last of them. And fantastic. That is the sawmill horde done from the ledge. What I like to do at the end is basically if there is any other freakers that are still alive, because you do sometimes get one or two extra that come over uh, when all the uh, action's taking place, just come from the position and uh, just wait for them to run towards you. And that's it, job done. Right then folks, on to method number four, and this is the stealth and high ground method. Now, as the title suggests, it's basically a two-parter. I'm basically going to try and take out as much of this horde as possible using stealth. And when I am finally discovered, because it's very rarely you get away with taking out this entire horde through stealth. When I'm finally discovered, 
I will take them to this special location, which I discovered myself, by the way, folks, and I will take them out nice and easy. But before I even start to engage the horde, I'm basically looking to place three remote bombs. The first one is by far the most important because it's beside the barrel. So when I set that off, I'll hopefully take out quite a number of the freakers. The other two are just going to be distraction uh, or more to the point to try and lure the horde over to those areas if they start getting too close to my position. But I'm starting off with a couple of flashbangs because I basically want them onto the ground level before starting to rain hell on them. And then I'm just going to go to town with a few bits and bobs. Uh, attractors will feature heavily. Uh, I also use attractor bombs. And as well as that, I'm going to hit them hard with grenades and pipe bombs. And when they are close enough, I'm going to be using the napalm molotovs. So I'll basically now go to town on the horde folks with their various throwables and whatnot. And I'll rejoin the commentary basically once I get discovered. And that's when I'll move on to the second part of this method, folks. Okay, at this point, folks, I am as confused as everybody else who is watching this video because I have no fucking idea what gave me away there. I was well away from the horde and uh, for some reason they just started coming at me, but never mind. I've got the good majority of this horde, so I'm heading over to the high ground area that I'm going to take out the last of them from. So I'm just placing down that attractor just to make sure that I can get up to this area nice and safe and that's the best way to get there once I'm on this part of the rock face it's just a case of picking them off with gunplay they follow a very specific route in order to reach you so I try and pick them off just as they're approaching the other side of the river and then once they actually get onto the rock area I turn my attention to this spot here because they're a bit closer obviously and the gun will do more damage plus they're basically just punching up very nicely here, so the gunplay is so easy to uh, basically take them out. And because I have taken out the vast majority of the numbers uh, using the stealth, I basically don't have to worry about any of them actually reaching my position. Because that's usually the only way that you manage to get any of the figures getting to this position through high numbers. So by using the stealth method first you do not have this potential problem that could arise and there we go folks that is the Sommelhor done and dusted using this method how easy was that folks the only thing I will say that I have against using this method is that it uses up a lot of resources 
in the first part of it when you're uh, using stealth. But other than that, folks, this run method is solid. Right, folks, on to method number five. This is the back rock. And this is an exclusive, folks, because no one has ever seen the horde taken out like this. This is another one of my discoveries. Now, before I go and get the horde, I'm actually taking the time to line up the bike in the direction that I'm going to be climbing up that rock face. And then from there, abandoning the bike and I'm heading over to the horde's position. But I do see something there that is going to be problematic. Uh, so I'm just going to take that out now. And I just want to get to around here. From here, I'm just going to use the MG55, which is what I'm equipped with. And once I see them coming out like that, yep, once I see a few of them uh, just basically jumping down, I know I've got them all coming over to my uh, position. So, from here, nice and easy. Just make sure Deacon is running on the bike. And you have the time, because the bike is already lined up, it's a nice, easy job. Just get the bike up to that point there. And from here, I'm looking to get over to this part of the rock. It's the highest part of this rock area here. And from here now, folks, it is just so, so easy. Now, this spot definitely is not untouchable, but you will get very few freakers that will actually get to your position here. Very few indeed. Um, this really is another very nice method. You could take the time to take out the entire board here with gunplay if you want to because they are very close to your position so the gun's going to do maximum damage to them. Um, but I will take the time to use one or two napalm molotovs just to speed up the process. Now, there's not really much more I need to say about this particular method, so I'm just going to let it play out and I'll just rejoin the commentary when the whole thing is just about taken care of. Right, at this point, folks, I've pretty much got this uh, horde taken care of. There will not be that many of them left. And yeah, as you can see from survival vision that I've just activated there, yeah, there's not many. And that's complete overkill. I didn't have to use a Molotov there. It's basically, what the hell, it's the end of the video. <laughs> and there we have it, folks. That is the fifth and final method. So... If you're one of the many people that struggles with the Sawmill Horde, any one of these methods will get the job done for you folks. And I hope this video helps a lot of people. Thank you so much for watching the video folks and I hope you all enjoyed it.